So today I will teach you how to use the 3D generation AI that will take your job and I will explain it step by step. You will have 20 free generations each day and I'm not going to show you how to set this up locally because it requires a couple of extra step and some more technical insight. I'm simply going to show you how to get access to this Chinese website where you have to make an account and you can generate models for free. I'm also going to show you exactly what I think of these models. I know this is a pretty sensitive topic right now in this community but still I'm just going to try it out and find out where we are headed what is the technology doing right now and what can we expect for the future so let's go over to google our well-known google and i'm going to type in 3 onecom and then we will get on the website it's in chinese and if you want to be able to read this, you can go over to these three dots, click on translate, and it will automatically translate it to whatever language you have set here. And now we can see what the Chinese actually means. Thank you, Google, for this wonderful feature. Welcome to Tencent Hun Yuhan 3D. Log in to start your 3D creation journey. Now let's do that. Uh, we can log in with WeChat. You don't have WeChat. You can log in with QQ. I don't know what this is. And you can log in with email. Uh, oh, QQ apparently brings us to an entire different thing. Uh, it's probably some government type shit. Uh, we're going to enter our email address and you can take whatever email address you would like and then you click on get verification code. So I'm going to type in mine. Get verification code. Yes, you agree with the license agreement. I don't care if some Chinese uses my data. I fear my own government more than I fear the Chinese. So let's go over to the Gmail account. You will get a Chinese email with a single line of text and it will say numbers right after it and that's Great, because we can read those. That's 365. Login, and then it will show you the home screen. Application experience is what we're going to click. Now it's going to give us access to the dashboard, which we have right here. So this is a dashboard. You can see some inspirations from other people that generated some models. Uh, so I tried using the Tusheng 3D, which is based on an image. So you can upload an image and then it will generate a 3D model. At least that is the idea. It doesn't work for me. When I try to enter something into this, doesn't matter which format I use, like JPEG, PNG, uh, whatever, it doesn't really work. So I tried to enter my microphone, which I created in 3D myself, but I have a very uh, dark background for it. So it's not too much visual noise. So it should be able to understand it. However, it just keeps uploading forever and forever. And I'm not entirely sure what the problem is. I haven't been able to fix this. So the image generation, at least on my end, doesn't work right here. It might work locally. I haven't tested that yet and I might do that shortly after in the future. So we're actually going over to Vincent 3D. Let's go over to the text generation prompts. So now you can just type some text and yes, it works with English. And let's generate a classy and luxurious perfume bottle. It's giving us a guide here. So you want to make sure that you first type perfume bottle and then a classy and luxurious glass 4K pink and rose gold premium realistic. Now let's click on generate now and it will take approximately seven minutes to generate four different models. So we're just going to wait for that right now. All right, so I think this one looks the most premium to me. I don't know. I think all of them look a little bit weird and not too good. I'm just simply going to take this one for now. All right, that actually doesn't look too bad. So let's click on download and get the GLB. All right, so as you can see, I have already brought in a perfume bottle, which is from a previous generation. This is what it looks like. Uh, it has its problems, but uh, I'm going to bring in the other one, show you exactly what's going on. I already brought in an HDRI to get some lighting in here. So import GLB or GLTF right here. There it is. And this is the model. It actually looks pretty good. It has a lot of shapes right here. And when it comes to general shape, this is actually quite fine. However, there's a problem. There is a criminal lack of control. So what we have is a, let's go into edit mode, a destroyed mesh. It's basically all triangles. There is really no interior as well. So if you go inside of this, uh, there's really no actual glass on the inside. It's just trying to fake it from the outside. So we have one model right here and it is trying to draw all these textures on here. Now you can already see some texturing issues right there. Basically, it's all just messed up triangles and you can't change anything. 
So you cannot change the texture unless you are willing to very carefully select all of these areas, then change all the textures. I don't think this is something that we would like to do. If I go into the texture paint mode, you will actually be able to see how it fakes all of these uh, textures on here. It's basically a UV unwrapped on all these areas. So let me go into edit mode. Let me select all of this. You can see the unwrapped areas in this little UV map and well, that's the way it's just changing these colors. So we have some orange, we have some pink. It is generating this fake color map and projecting it onto the entire mesh. So that's the way it actually works. So it did understand these rings, for example, and it brought them somewhere where it has this color. And it did that very well, to be honest. But I really don't think that this is enough to incorporate in the workflow just yet, simply because we have a lack of control. I do think it could work out very well if you have something in the background. You need something in the background real quick. What, you're going to model an entire perfume bottle just to get a quick background asset? I don't think so. We can just simply generate it, keep it in the background, doesn't matter that much. Uh, and I think it's pretty good for those type of things. Now, let me show you how they actually fake this glass type effect because there is no glass in here. There's no glass BSDF. There is no transmission. So basically what's going on is that it's faking glass with the metallic and roughness. So you can see that right here, if I unplug these, it's gone. By the way, you can see the line here because there is no interior, it interpreted it on the outside. Pretty interesting stuff. So right now, let's go ahead and take a look at the characters it will be able to create. I already opened my internet. I asked it for an anime character that looked like Nami. So here she is. I do think it's pretty cool that you can simply generate an entire piece like this from scratch, from nothing. And it looks pretty cool straight out of the box. I'm not going to lie, I think this is pretty cool. Let's just light this real quickly to make it stronger. And let's light it right over here. Let's bring it further back. Let's make it bigger. This should just be some type of soft light to fill in some shadows. All right, so now we generated a pretty cool looking model lit correctly and that looks pretty awesome if you ask me. I don't think we're quite there yet when it comes to artistic control so when it comes to generating models some models are not that interesting. It's totally fine to generate those models. You don't want to make things over and over again. You already buy asset packs which is also completely fine because people spend some time on it to create it and make some good packs that you can immediately use in your scene. But the grand switch that is going to take place with AI is actually going to be able to acquire a taste. So to see what actually looks good, to see and manipulate the scene in such a way to make a composition that is appealing to the eye, which non-regular artists or non-artists really don't possess. So that's going to be the skill that's going to be more in demand, getting a good taste in lighting, for example, or getting a good taste in composition, or how the camera should move, uh, the emotions that you're trying to evoke. And that's going to be more important than the model itself eventually. But I believe with AI, we are going to be able in approximately two years to generate every model that we want, probably with textures that can be manipulated as well. But I'm quite impressed with the results, to be honest. It has its problems, but I definitely see how this can be used in the future uh, to speed up creation. And I think a lot of people are scared right now that AI will take their jobs. But the way you should see it is that the simple things will probably die. I have a pretty specific philosophy around AI where I cover terms like the OPAT or the one person as a team, uh, the software as a service that will become service with a software. Uh, I have thought about these things for quite some time and compiled them in something pretty interesting. I'm not entirely sure if you would like a video about this. It is more philosophy driven instead of doing 3D. But in any case, I just wanted to show you exactly how this works so you can use it for yourself, try it out, and what the limitations are and possible things that might change in the future. Right now, we've just watched the front page, but there's actually quite a few features in this website. Uh, you can go to the laboratory and there is a 3D animation generation part. There are intelligent service reduction parts. Given this image, I still think the, the retopology won't be that good. It will just reduce the amount of faces that you have. Uh, we have 3D character generation with an avatar, so you can upload a picture of yourself and it will generate a avatar. We have 3D texture generation, 3D mini game creation. I don't even know what this is. I haven't clicked on it yet. And sketch up 3D, so you can load your sketch in and it will turn it into a 3D model. So those are a couple of things that you can play around with in this website. And there's also the workflow section which is still being built so stay tuned stay tuned this is not done 
Uh, I've tried to play around with this, but didn't get that good results. You probably need some more higher quality images. I tried this image of a cat. It uh, didn't really take this image. Uh, right here you can click on run and then it will do the different operations necessary in order to generate the model which should have bones directly added to it. So that's the idea. I haven't been able to make this work and I've tried with like four or five images. But I will play around with this and uh, see if I can get something out of this. Uh, we have workflows. There are supposed to be different workflows. So you also have a game props workflow. You have a game character workflow. Uh, they are focusing quite heavily on game creation, I'm noticing. That's just the surface of it. I really think that you should try it out for yourself to see the potential of this and how you feel about it. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, I would highly recommend checking out one of these videos next.